Well, for our research project, climate aid is money that helps people or the natural systems that they depend on for survival adjust to changes in climate or extreme weather events or prepare for those changes, such as rising sea level, extreme weather events, drought, shortages in water and food supply, that sort of thing. Well, we found in our research that um, from the years 2005 to 2008, there's been about $184 billion of international aid committed to Africa. Of that, about $1 billion has been dedicated to what we defined as adaptation projects. Um, and that's about just over a half a percent of overall aid going to climate change adaptation to Africa. Looking at 4,000 projects over a four-year time period, um, for Africa continent-wide, what we discovered is um, that approximately 750 projects could consider to have some component that addresses climate change adaptation out of um, a total of, I believe, about 131,000 projects. We had partnered up with Development Gateway in Washington, D.C. Development Gateway has a program called the Aid Management Platform, which partners with recipient governments to develop a system that allows them to record their aid inflows. Malawi is on the cutting edge working with this AMP data and has gone on record as saying that they're going to publicly um, make available the, all this AMP data by the end of 2011. So it gave us an opportunity to actually get in on the ground floor, use the data that Malawi had been collecting directly from donors, and do our adaptation coding, geocoding, and other things. In the case of Ethiopia, it was simply a critical case study. Ethiopia is one of the largest recipients of international development aid. It's highly aid dependent, and it also is extremely vulnerable to climate change. So understanding what aid was going for adaptation in Ethiopia and whether or not that, that aid was being well coordinated and implemented is an incredibly important question geopolitically and in the broader um, scheme of looking at adaptation. So we were fortunate enough to visit about four sites um, in uh, a little outside of the main city. And uh, I think what was most surprising is how knowledgeable the farmers and the local people are about climate change. We got a chance to go to five different kinds of sites, actually. We saw um, a small-scale irrigation project, a large-scale irrigation project, um, a dairy cow investment project, um, a reclamation of a drying lake, and also reclamation of land that had been overgrazed and overpicked um, for firewood. So actually on, on our last day in Malawi, we got to do a site visit to a project being funded by Norway. And this is an adaptation project um, being implemented by a local Malawian NGO. And really just seeing this, um, seeing this project on the ground was just a really great experience. We got to talk to communities, we got to meet with farmers, we got to understand what climate change means for them. So they got to explain to us that, you know, um, there's been more and more droughts, that they are having more and more problems with their crop yields. And then this NGO has come in and is working with them. And since they've started working with these new strategies, they've really seen this difference. So their crop yields are better. Um, they're more able to adapt to these changing climate conditions. And it was just really great to speak with these farmers and actually understand how this work has affected them. At least when we visited them, a lot of the ones that we saw just seemed to be working very smoothly, which, you know, like when we were studying the literature, a lot of things came about, well, this is wrong with aid, this is wrong with aid. And then you go see like one specific project, and the problem is not with the adaptation methods, it's with the funding and the coordination. Um, so it was interesting to see just how successful these projects really can be. The experience with field work was especially good. Like we, I think we did 27 interviews, if I recall correctly, and with a variety of different types of people. Seeing, seeing what was going on on the ground really put all of this adaptation into a new perspective for me. Um, really getting to speak with donors to see what they're doing and to really understand the practical challenges that they're dealing with. So um, when we look at aid here in Austin and we're trying to figure out what these donors are doing, it's hard to understand what their intentions are, why they're doing these certain projects. Um, and then when we traveled there and we really got to talk with them, 
um, they help to kind of illustrate a lot of the challenges that are that are going on in terms of addressing climate change. Having the experience of trying a lot of different interview styles to get that one thing that you're looking for, that's something that I think that I'll use frequently in research um, from here on out. And then also um, just the idea of, of contacting people like this, it's not something that is easy to do at first, but having gotten that skill, I think for a career, that'll be really useful. So some of the, one of the things that our research also does is it gives a sense of how much money is currently being allocated to Africa to address climate change adaptation. And one of the big conversations in the international community is, is to make sure that there is new and additional finance to address climate change above and beyond traditional development projects. So we, um, will we have a deliverable to our client, which is the Department of Defense. Uh, so we'll be um, communicating to them the findings of our research. And we'll also be um, delivering this information to the international aid community to talk to them about some of our policy prescriptions, some of the challenges that we um, experienced in uh, the, the fact that there's a lack of consensus in the community about how to define climate change adaptation in the first place. Right, well there are a couple of directions this is going. Uh, first and foremost, we actually have um, another small army of LBJ graduate students who are descending upon DC this summer to be interns at Development Gateway. And what they will be working on is an extensive geocoding, first of all of Malawi's active aid projects. And as mentioned in the presentation today, this is the first effort to ever visualize aid flows across all donors for any particular country. So this could be a real game changer in terms of, of getting donors and recipient governments to sign on to the idea of tracking and mapping aid flows.